Hello, this is Sam from Sound on Sound magazine. I'm at the NAMM show in Anaheim, California. I'm on the Dangerous Music booth with Marek. How are you doing? I'm doing great, my brother. Excellent. You're looking remarkably cheerful. For Absolutely, someone who's been in the trade show man. For two whole days. It's Sunday. We had a rock and trade show, and we're ready to go off to Catalina Island. I'm going to drag my crew out to do a day of hiking and camping, and then we'll wine them and dine them the next day. Well, can I come and work for you? Absolutely. <laughs> show me your writing skills. Yeah. <laughs> well, you may not uh, wish to pursue that after we've talked about this. This is your new product. What is it? It's uh, the Two Bus XT. So it was 20 years ago today that we had the Two Bus LT hit the planet. And that was a less expensive version of the Two Bus. Since then, 20 years ago later, whoop, we have created the Two Bus XT. It is the same six layer circuit technology that you find in the Two Bus Plus. We have also added two unique color circuits because life's too short to make the same thing happen all the time. So one of them is Transformer 3. We call it Transformer 3 because you've got custom wound Cinemags in 2 Bus Plus, you've got Hammonds in the Convert AD Plus, and here we have Chris Muse Magic Sauce in Transformer 3. We're gonna have a little more sparkle in the top, and we're gonna take that energy around 40 hertz, and we're gonna roll it up into a usable place up into 80 and make it feel like there's more bottom, but that will give you more dynamic range because it's eating, it's freeing up some of that low end content that's sucking up your energy. And then we have a coherent circuit. Coherence is actually a circuit that will bring your music together, but also spread it out. What does that mean? That means I'm calling it dimensional asymmetry. So it pulls it, it pulls out the spikes that are on the on the outer edges of your audio and spreads out your audio. So you feel it move out a little bit, but tighten up. So it's sort of an oxymoron that isn't. So you can put that on your parallel. It's already on a parallel bus here. So remember parallel is your dry signal and we're rolling up your wet into it. That's all set up for you. And I want you to realize you can assign it to either your mix bus or you can assign it to 1516. The beauty of that is not just so you can assign things to 1516 and print and commit, something that most of us men are afraid of doing, but you can actually set it up on an aux end. So remember, there's 10,000 million little men inside your door that are willing to automate turn pan pots and move faders, right? So you can take those guys and now maybe you're on the second hook and you wanna drive a little level into the transformer to get some sparkle to the background vocals and maybe it's the third hook and you wanna drive a little more into it. Well, great, we can automate that now. So think of these circuits as analog outboard because that's exactly what they are. So you're adding two analog outboard processors to your summing mixer. Okay, lastly, we built it so it's standalone and it's also expandable. So you can use this with more of them. You can use this with the two bus plus, so you can have 24 channels of summing and you can use it with a two bus, sorry, with a T box plus, so it's 24 channels of summing, or you can use it with a two bus plus, so it's 32 channels of summing. And then you would have five color circuits. When I asked Chris, hey, can you give me a thing that does something like this, right? People want to, people love glue on their mix. They talk about that quite often, but glue on your mix could just be, hey, I've got 108 dB of stereo separation, right? And I just bring it down to 50, right? That could be glue. That's not what I want. I, obviously, we love stereo separation. You've got massive amount of, of that on here, our crosstalk is at least minus 108 on this box. We wanna give you the biggest sound stage you possibly can and then place things in there. But I, what it sounds like to me, and you go listen to it, you tell me what you think. I just hear things get a little wider, but it feels tighter. So all I can guess is that certain frequencies are, are compressing and others are not. I don't know, I don't have a good answer So it's for basically you. a make it sound better button. Yeah, it's, yeah it, it definitely, it makes it feel good. So again, remember when we're mixing, mixing is not symmetrical, right? Because when you do that, we're bored. We're people that were born, we lived in caves um, and we are wired to hear, um, our auditory nerve is the fastest thing that happens in our body, right? So if you put your hand on a stove, it takes a long time for that to go up your arm, go up to your brain, go back down and say, pull your hand off. We, are, we react much faster to sound. 
auditory cues. So for example, like uh, we step on a, a, we hear a twig breaking, we wake up. We can sleep uh, in, a, in a storm, we can sleep next to a, you know, a big tide and an ocean. That's fine because we know that's not gonna harm us. We've taken that information, we've stowed it away and say there's no danger in this. But something like a twig breaking or the roar of a beast is gonna wake us up. And so in music, when we just hear a kick drum doing the same fucking thing over and over and over again, we file that, no danger, and we put it away. So you need to make your music change to keep the listener engaged. And you can do it in very subtle ways. So by using that coherence in different places in the track, as opposed to just setting and forgetting it, you know, riding it, like I was saying, on a fader, so you're bringing it in certain places, you're keeping the listener engaged and excited about the music. Because your job as a mix engineer is to take the artist's dream, understand it, realize it, and then lead the listener, have the lead vocalist lead the listener through the story from the beginning all the way to the end. Do not lose them on the journey. And the only way you're gonna do that is by keeping things interesting. In so if place. I want to use this device to keep things interesting, how much is it gonna cost me? Gonna cost you 2,000 bucks and it's shipping in Q4. Awesome, thank you, Marek. All right, man. Great to see you. Good times, give me a knock.